It took me way too long to be in a position to make this video, but we finally got promoted in Colombia. If you have no idea what I'm talking about, I stream on Twitch four days a week. We are currently playing in Colombia. I'd love to see you there. The link is down in the description. Wait, that's not the only place you can see it because we have now started a Zealand Live YouTube channel, my second YouTube channel, and I will upload all of my full streams on Twitch there. The first one has just gone up, and maybe by the time this video comes out, another one or two more are gonna go up. That's also down in the description, so check out the live channel and you'll be able to keep up to date with everything even if you cannot watch the streams it won't just be the football manager streams but every single stream will be up on the live channel within 24 hours of the stream finishing but on to what we want to talk about today we're talking about what to do once your team gets promoted now i've had a lot of conversations like this on stream about the, well what do i do in this situation and so on and so forth but now that i've actually gotten Janeros into the top flight in colombia i can talk about what i've done in order to be very successful in my first season in the top flight because right now we are actually second in the second phase of the season if you don't understand how the colombian league works that's okay i don't either but that's certainly not bad second out of 20 teams in our first season my goal is to help you overcome any obstacles you might face once you get promoted because getting promoted is one of the greatest experiences you can have in the game i am always absolutely ecstatic when it happens even if i have no idea that it happened yeah, well, we're not a champion of the, uh, we're talking about promotion. I told you the Colombian league rules were confusing, but no matter where you're playing in the world, no matter how big or small of a jump you're taking to get promoted, I'm going to try and give these tips that can help all of you. That's a sentence, right? Now, the first thing that I want you to do is to take stock of the effect this is going to have on your finances, because if you are like me, you are busy running your team into the ground to try and get promoted. This is not something I necessarily recommend, but I just figured I could spin my way into the top flight and I'll be darned if I didn't spin my way into the top flight. I went from insecure to okay in financial status. And while it can be very complicated to look at your expenditure and income uh, and then go into the competitions and then you have to click on the competitions and go, go to rules. And then maybe if you have a league that isn't incredibly weird, you'll see you know, the prize money for that competition. You can look at the other competitions to find prize money, but <sighs> take a breath, go to your finances. Once the league calendar turns over, what does it say here in your financial status? That will reflect how solvent you are or insolvent you are financially. This is very important because a promotion can often change the entire outlook of whether you can approve facilities, whether you can spend big on wages, whether it is comfortable for you to ask for more money in the transfer or wage budget from your board, or whether you can anticipate a windfall from your board uh, in terms of the budgets. And they might give it to you right away, right after the season ends. But if they don't, now you know that you have access to more funds, even if those funds haven't arrived yet, just because you're in this top league. A huge huge example of this is if you get promoted from the English Championship up to the Premier League, you just made over $100 million. That won't show up in your income right away. But you just made $100 million and your finances will more than likely end up being secure or rich the moment that you get promoted because of this fact. Colombia, unfortunately, not as much money, but I did get a lot more money for TV rights and those things immediately just for being in the top flight to take me from insecure to okay. So now it's not something 
that I have to worry about unless I start spending a lot of money. Don't worry, my board took care of that. They bought a new stadium, so ha, that's great, go us. Of course, the promotion is also going to affect things like sponsorship money, and especially if you're making one of the larger jumps, like maybe Ligue 2 to Ligue 1 in France, uh, that's a very large jump in terms of sponsorship income. You are going to just be making a lot more money. But once you understand what framework you're now working in and how stable your team is after the promotion or how many more resources you have access to, it's now time to take you know, take stock of the obvious. And the second thing I wanna talk about is how comfortably did you get promoted, right? So when, the, when I get these questions in my DMs, they're in Twitter, they're in Instagram, they're in, that's actually it. Oh, there's a lot of social media. Can you DM on TikTok? I actually have no idea. Right, when you send me this DM, that is the first question I'm gonna ask you, is how well did you do the previous season? And if you didn't do well, uh, just to use an English example again, let's say you got promoted, but you were the worst team to make the playoffs, you're going to need to do a ton to be able to stay because it's all about staying up the first year. Once you stay up the first year, your sponsorship money is going to continue to go up, your bank account is going to continue to get fatter, and you're going to continue to get more comfortable and more capable of being able to stay up more comfortably. That first year is what matters a ton, and if you barely got up, you're gonna need to make some changes, especially if you know there's a huge gulf in quality. Zealand, how would we know there's a huge gulf in quality? You're in luck. I have two ways to figure this out. One, hopefully you're playing in a bunch of cup competitions. In Colombia, we have a cup competition where we play in a group stage and we have to play top flight teams every year because they're always in our group stage in this cup. It's weird. Copa Postabon, lovely viewing. When we played the top flight teams, I would put my first team out there until we got eliminated from the cup, inevitably, and we would be able to hold our own. We weren't getting dominated in possession, we weren't getting severely outchanced, and we weren't playing the best teams in the top flight. But these are the types of teams we'd need to be able to hang with after we got promoted, and our performances against them gave me confidence. You should also be confident if you play a team that is in the the tier above you in a cup competition, or maybe even multiple tiers above you, and you hold your own. That's a good sign. Not every time that you get promoted, do you have to just go nuts and spend a ton of money and loan in a bunch of players and try and change absolutely everything. If you got promoted with a team that was able to hold its own against teams that were above you last season, they'll be able to do it again this season, unless they're all geriatric. I had a 40 year old player. I, that, you need to make some changes. Hey, run the right way. <laughs> So, God, there's a joke there, Reese, but I wasn't even close to it. The other way to figure out how good you are compared to the teams that you're playing against is to go to team report and go to comparison. And then once this turns over like highest average and leg up a step on, you go to attributes and say, this is how my defense compares to the rest of the league. We actually have the best tacklers in the league, right? So you see that in the top league, Liga up step on. We just got promoted. You see this and you go, okay. We can hang. But if you see them all down here below this average line, I'm looking at midfielder main attributes. I'm looking at now midfield attributes, attacking attributes. Uh, we've gone over how this works in other videos, but just real quickly, these are your attributes. These are the positions you're showing. So if you do defense and strikers, you're gonna be looking at your striker's ability to defend. Nobody cares. Got it? Cool. If you are below the average line everywhere all the time, you will need help to stay up. It could be temporary help. If you have the financial resources, it could be full-time help. I would obviously recommend buying one player. And this is what I did. One player who's been there before. Experience counts for a lot in football manager. So getting somebody that's been there before, don't spend like life-changing amounts of money if they're not life-changing for you. But getting someone that's been there before will help, whether it's on loan or on a permanent signing. If you are promoted, but not to the top league, or you were promoted to a top league that's not one of the major ones in the world, consider getting a senior affiliate in a different country or in your country so that you can get free loans of quality players that are able to play at that level of league. The free loans are huge because you might not have the financial resources to put together a full team that is able to compete at the level you're now at to raise those attributes that we just saw in this comparison screen, but you have the financial resources to put together seven of the 11. And then you just loan in the other four and you have a very capable team at that level. This is why senior affiliates are the number one thing I recommend all the time until you are all the way up there, or you have the finances to just be able to put together a full team that 
can accomplish all the things domestically that you want to accomplish. I mean, shoot, I'm first in the league right now. I have one, two, three, four, five, six players loaned in. This guy, this guy, they're both loaned in from other Colombian top flight teams. How? I don't know. They're fools. They can't scout like I can. But you can find deals like this to help buoy your team if you look at your comparison and you look at your results against teams in the division above you and say, Laudi, we need some help. Laudi, this is how you get the help. But here's one thing I can tell you about being a newly promoted side. You have to get comfortable with the fact that you are not going to be as good as you were last year, except in very rare circumstances. Like if you're in the seventh tier of England, you get promoted to the sixth tier. Sometimes the ball just gets rolling and you are already the best team in the league. You are just not going to be as good. So you need to change the way that you give your team talks. You need to lower the expectations that you're setting in your team talks to not over pressurize them and then bring the locker room down. You also need to change your tactics make sure at least in the early part of the season since you are not quite sure how your team will react unless you are you've been playing the game for a long time sure how your team's going to react to this new level play a little more defensive and then if you start to win more you can revert back to a more offensive version of your tactic that you most likely used to get yourself promoted i would use a four triple two with two strikers up here before but i came up to the top flight and we've moved down to a more four three three position which is helped us be more confident defending against the best teams in Colombia. Once you get that confidence, all bets are off. Just keep it in your mind that you're not gonna be able to outspend these teams. They've been at this level for a lot longer than you, obviously. Take stock of what it's going to cost to stay above relegation. And remember, if you're one of those teams that just has no business being in the division in the first place, you see this happen in a couple of countries. It definitely happens in Italy. It definitely happens in England, where your board expects you to go back down. The promotion made you a lot of money. And even if you end up in a position where you are going to go back down, even if you've made all the right loan signings, you've done everything you possibly can do, it's still a productive experience. And the next time you end up in that league, you're gonna make it stick. Here's how you get senior affiliates, by the way. You go to your club vision. I know these things. You go to make board request, which I cannot do for, I, pff, we broke a law, I don't know. You make a board request, you look for a senior affiliate. You can also do that from your club info affiliates here. And then at the bottom, you can look for senior affiliate. Apparently the top level of Columbia, we are far too good to be looking for a senior affiliate, which is ridiculous. Ridiculous. Now, there's a little facet in man management that's actually going to give you an advantage once you have been promoted. That is that you are riding high. Most likely you have great team cohesion. You definitely have an excellent locker room atmosphere and you have the support of the players. This means for the early portion of the season, you're just going to have a mental leg up over the vast majority of the teams that you will be competing against in the top flight, as long as you don't ruin it by selling some really important player in the off season. It's important not to get too sentimental with players that help you got promoted if they're not good enough to play at the next level, but you also don't want to hatch a job the happiness of your team because it is one of the few natural advantages that you're bringing with yourself once you get moved up to another league. You can maximize the happiness you have in the locker room by praising, praising conduct, make sure you're praising the trainings and trying nipping bad training performances in the bud by criticizing, you, you can't do it too many times in a row, I think twice in a row. And then after that, you have to stop for once, one or two training sessions. It's a good way to keep your team riding high as long as possible. The happier they are, the longer they will stay motivated and the easier it is to motivate them going into a match, which I honestly think has a huge difference is if you look at one common thread between teams that get relegated and especially teams that are gonna get relegated right after getting promoted, they lose the belief in themselves in real life in this game. Once that happens, the moment they give up the first goal, the match is over. You can't get their brains back around actually trying to win. You avoid that as long as possible. Hopefully with the rest of this video, you make the right moves in the off season and you take stock of whether to change anything or not, and you won't be losing. The bottom line is this. You are about to attempt to do something that could be very easy. It could also be very difficult or actually impossible. Like if I've got a hundred tries, I might not be able to keep your team up but take stock of how good they are. Make sure you keep your dynamics high. Set yourself up to be able to sign cheap or free players from your senior affiliate or other loan moves elsewhere that are gonna give your team a chance 
to compete with the new teams around them. You've done something awesome. Hopefully you can stay up. I look forward to the stories in the comments and I will see you guys on another stream video from this sweet pad that we're, we're in now.